Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of our attendees joining us today for this latest Data Science Central webinar. This is Sean Welch, your host. I am the host and producer at Data Science Central. I'd like to start off our event today by thanking Gurobi for sponsoring today's event. Gurobi is a longtime supporter of the Data Science Central community, and we are honored to have them sponsoring our event today. Today's webinar is entitled, Mathematical Optimization Modeling, Learn the Basics, to be presented by Gurobi. Before we begin, I'd like to briefly review today's format. Today's event will be one hour long. We have one presenter who I'll introduce in just a minute. There will be a 10 to 15 minute Q&A following the presentation. And this event is being recorded and will be available on datasciencecentral.com later this afternoon following today's live event. I'd also like to encourage our attendees to provide questions throughout the presentation. We will be reviewing and presenting them on your behalf during the Q&A portion of today's event. I'm very pleased to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Pano Santos with Garobi. Dr. Santos is a senior technical content manager at Garobi Optimization. He retired from Hewlett Packard Enterprise as a distinguished technologist. During his 23 years at HP Labs, he developed and implemented several decision support tools of mathematical programming applications for workforce planning at the services industry, supply chain planning, CRA, transportation and logistics, and operating room scheduling. Dr. Santos has a bachelor's degree in applied mathematics from the University of Mexico and a master and PhD degrees in operations research from the University of Waterloo in Canada. Thanks for being with us today, Pano. We're looking forward to your presentation. Mathematical optimization, MO, technologies are being utilized today by leading global companies across industries, including aviation, energy, finance, logistics, telecommunications, manufacturing, media, and many more to solve a wide range of complex real-world problems, make optimal data-driven decisions, and achieve greater operational efficiency. An increasing number of data scientists are adding MO into their analytics toolbox and developing applications that combine MO and machine learning technologies. In today's Data Science Central webinar, you will learn the main components of an MO problem, how to formulate an MO model, how to build an MO model using the Garobi Python API, how to modify the original model formulation and accommodate changing conditions, and how to implement changes in the model using the Garobi Python API. Pano, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. You can begin as soon as you're ready to go. Thank you, Sean. So um, let me let me give a brief uh, outline of what I'm going to cover during this webinar. So I will start with an introduction of uh, mathematical optimization. Then I will describe uh, a problem that is called the resource assignment problem. Then I will explain how this resource assignment problem can be formulated as a linear programming problem. Then I will explain how the linear programming uh, problem formulation of the resource assignment problem can be implemented using the Gurobi Python API. And then I will make an extension of the resource assignment problem, but uh, to really address this uh, extension, uh, we will need to use uh, a mixed integer programming problem formulation. Then I will uh, summarize what we have covered during this uh, webinar. So let, let, let me start with the introduction uh, and a little bit of history. Uh, the origins of mathematical optimization can be traced back to the invention of linear programming uh, by George Danzig just after Second World War II. And essentially, uh, George Danzig created the whole field of uh, mathematical uh, programming or mathematical optimization. However, at the early stages of linear programming, there, were, uh, there was a Russian economist. Uh, his, uh, his name was uh, Kantarovich, and another economist called Kukman that uh, made uh, significant contributions to linear programming. But the whole field 
of mathematical optimization uh, really was led by uh, George Nancy. So um, what is mathematical optimization? Uh, mathematical optimization is a declarative approach where the modeler formulates a mathematical optimization model, states all the properties associated with the potential solution, and then defines a criteria to guide the search towards the best uh, possible solution. This is in contrast to algorithm, uh, algorithmic approaches where essentially you specify each of the steps that you need to have in order to build a solution. Mathematical optimization really entails uh, three steps or phases. The first one is to formulate a real world problem as a mathematical optimization problem. And there are different classes of, of, of mathematical optimization problems. In this particular webinar, we are going to talk about MIPS and you will know what they're what they are all about. Uh, the second phase um, is the development of algorithms to solve those mathematical optimization uh, models. And the third uh, phase is to use software and hardware to run these algorithms and develop uh, mathematical uh, programming applications. So really, uh, mathematical optimization uh, now is a tool uh, that uh, is very powerful and, and Essentially, what uh, you need to, t to do to take advantage of this tool is to uh, uh, formulate your problem as a mathematical optimization problem, and I will describe the, the, the main components of, of, of those mathematical optimization uh, uh, models. And then as, as you have an accurate uh, representation of your uh, problem, then you can collect uh, the data that is required to, to feed that model and then you can you can call a, a, a solver. And in this particular case, uh, the Grovi solver basically has the best performance in, in, in the market. And then you you take a, a basically the Grovi solver will give you a solution. But as you see, you don't need to worry about uh, how to solve the problem. You just need to formulate the problem and formulate it accurately and get the data. And then the Grovi algorithms will will basically solve your your problem. So why mathematical optimization is important? Well, uh, mathematical optimization has been applied in a variety of business areas, empowering companies across various industries uh, to rapidly solve the complex real world problems, uh, to make uh, better business decisions that improve operational e efficiency, and achieve significant time and cost savings and revenue growth. So in, in our website, and I strongly recommend that you visit our, our web website, we have a bunch of uh, case studies where we show how our customers are using mathematical uh, optimization uh, approaches, and in particular, they are using the Grovi Solver Optimizer and, 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 and uh, achieving great results. So let, let me give you three examples about very interesting applications. Uh, one is from the National Football League, the NFL, uses optimization to solve one of the most challenging scheduling problems in, in, in existence. So essentially, the NFL using Gurobi create the NFL season uh, schedule. Another very important and interesting application um, is from Air France. Air France uh, estimates that it's saving around 1% of fuel cost for its entire fleet using uh, optimization. And another very interesting application that, 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 that uh, you, can, you can read about um, is from the Federal Communication um, Commission, FCC. Uh, the FCC used optimizations and uh, op the operations research to repurpose the wireless spectrum. And they have generated uh, about $20 billion in revenue. And from these $20 billion, $7.3 billion was used to reduce the federal uh, deficit. So let's now talk about the resource assignment problem. So um, consider the, the following scenario. 
uh, assume that there is a consulting company that has three open positions. Uh, a tester job, a Java developer job, and an architect job. And let's assume that uh, in this company, they have identified the three top resources, Carlos, Joe, and Monica. And through competency tests and, and historical uh, uh, data, um, um, uh, they can compute uh, a matching score. And essentially, the, the, the matching score describes how well um, uh, a resource can perform a job. So for example, if Carlos is allocated to the tester job, then the matching score will be uh, 53. Um, and uh, the matching score will be a number between zero and 100. Zero if the person is not at all qualified to perform that job, and 100 if the person is a perfect match for, for that particular job. So um, let's, let's uh, uh, also consider that uh, the following uh, assumptions or constraints to, to solve this problem. So let's assume that only one resource can be assigned to a job, and at most one job can be assigned to a resource. And our goal here will be to find a, an assignment or a matching of resources to jobs in such a way that the total uh, uh, summation of the matching scores derived from those assignments is, is, is maximized. So let's, let's think about a, a simple heuristic. So consider the highest score. Match the resource with the job of the highest score and eliminate resources and, and, and jobs from the table that cannot be uh, matched any, any longer because of this matching. Then go again and, and find uh, another uh, highest uh, score. And if there are no scores anymore, stop. Uh, all the jobs and resources have been assigned. Otherwise, if there is another highest uh, uh, score, go, go to step one. So let's, let, let's see, based on this uh, simple example, how this uh, approach will, uh, will follow. So what is the highest score, the, the highest um, matching score? Uh, we get that score when Joe is uh, assigned to the tester job, and the matching score is uh, 80%. So since now Joe has been assigned to the tester job, um, uh, Joe cannot be assigned to Java developer or architect and the tester job cannot be assigned to Carlos or Monica. So we should eliminate those uh, matching scores. So let's do that. So now, what is the next uh, highest matching score? The next highest matching score is when we assign Monica to the Java uh, developer uh, job. And let's now remove matching scores that are no longer uh, feasible when we have these two assignments. And the only matching score that we have left is when we assign Carlos to the architect job. So let's do that. Let's analyze this, this uh, assignment and let's compute the total uh, matching score that we can get uh, uh, when we have this assignment. So when we assign a job to the tester job, we get a matching score of 80. Uh, Monica to the Java developer job, uh, matching score of 73, and Carlos uh, assigned to the architect job, 13. So the total matching score is 166. Uh, but this is not a very good assignment. Why? Because Carlos was assigned to a job with the lowest score. Certainly, we might be able to do better than this. So let's, let's consider another approach. So uh, when you want to assign uh, the first job, you have three candidates uh, to assign this job to. And when you want to assign the second job, there are two remaining candidates uh, that, that, that you can assign this job. And when you want to assign the third uh, job, you just have one remaining candidate to assign that third job. So the number of possible assignments that you can have using this approach will be for the first job, you have three possibilities. For the second job, you have two possibilities. And, and for the third job, you have one possibility. 
So the total number of possible assignments is three times two times one, which is equal to six. This number in mathematics uh, has a special name. It's called three factorial. So let's now consider uh, the, 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 uh, the, let's now follow this approach and enumerate all the possible assignments. Since there are six, we can easily enumerate. So in, in this particular case, uh, uh, we have assigned for the first um, assignment, uh, Carlos has been as assigned to the tester job, uh, Joe has been assigned to the Java developer job, and Monica has been assigned to the architect job. And the total matching score is 147. So we have all of these uh, possible assignments, and then let's choose the optimal one. So the, the, the maximum is uh, 193, and in this uh, particular case, Carlos is assigned to the tester job, Monica is assigned to the Java developer job, and Joe is assigned to the architect job. Also, this looks like a reasonable uh, approach to, to, to solve this problem. Let's consider the following situation. Suppose that the consulting company gets a, a major contract that requires 100 jobs. So, so now the problem will be to assign 100 candidates to 100 jobs. So the enumeration algorithm that we just proposed will need to enumerate 100 factorial. And 100 factorial will be a number with 157 zeros. This number is really unthinkable because uh, this number is much more larger than the number of atoms in the universe which is approximately a number with 80 zeros. So even if you use the faster supercomputer today, that is called Summit, which can make uh, mathematical calculations at the rate of 200 petaflops per second, uh, Summit, uh, this supercomputer, will take an astronomical number of years to numerate all the assignments and determine the optimal solution. So really, this enumeration approach is completely impractical. So let's, let's now uh, try uh, another approach, and this will be based on linear programming. So let's restate the problem again. And uh, we have three jobs, a tester, Java developer, and architect. We have three resources, Carlos, Joe, and Monica. And we have the matching scores that uh, tell us that for each job and resource combination, what, uh, what is the matching score? And we have this table that uh, has that information. And we are making the assumption that only one resource can be assigned to a job, and at most one job can be assigned to a resource. And the problem that we want to solve is to determine an assignment that ensures that each job is filled and each resource is assigned to at most one job. And our goal or objective function is to maximize the total matching scores uh, derived from uh, an assignment. So uh, let's see uh, uh, how we can formulate uh, this problem as, an, uh, as, a, as a linear programming problem. So uh, a linear programming problem will have four components. And the first component that is very important to define in the mathematical optimization model are the decision variables. So in this particular case, the decision variable represents the different uh, courses of action. So look at this table. So each cell in this table will have a decision variable that will tell us if we can assign a resource to uh, a job. And uh, to simplify uh, our notation when we define our decision variables, uh, we will use indices um, for each of the resources and each of the jobs. So Carlos will get the index of one, Joe of the index of two, and Monica the index of three. Uh, tested job, the index of one, Java developer, uh, the index of two, and Archip the index of three. So X11 will be equal to one when Carlos is assigned to a tested job. Another example will be x23 equal to 1 when Joe is assigned to the architect job. And when you don't assign a resource to a job, the decision variable is, is 0. So in this particular case, based on this table, we can easily see that we, can, uh, we must have nine decision variables. One decision variable per each combination of resource and job assignment. So 
Um, uh, another important component for optimization are the job constraints. And again, we can use our table, this table that uh, shows the resource and jobs combination. And let's, uh, we can look at, at the columns. So each column represents a job. So for the tester job, either we assign Carlos, or we assign Joe, or we assign Monica. And we want to make sure that one of these resources satisfies the requirement of uh, the tester job. And how can we do uh, this uh, mathematically? So we will define a constraint that we are going to call uh, the tester constraint or the job constraint for a tester position. And the mathematical uh, formulation for this constraint will be X11, which is uh, if Carlos is assigned to the tester job, X21 if Joe is assigned to the tester job, or if Monica is assigned to the tester job. So we are going to decide which of these variables is going to be one. And here we have an equality constraint because we want to ensure that uh, one resource is assigned to the job so that job is, is, is filled. And the other type of constraints that we are going to have are the resource constraints. And again, we can use our table here to see how this constraint can be formulated. So now resources are defined based on, on, on the rows of this uh, table. So here the possible choices that we can have is that Carlos is assigned to a tester job, or Carlos is assigned to a Java developer job, or Carlos is assigned to an architect job. And ha Carlos is 100% available to, to be assigned to any of these tester jobs. But in this particular case, we, we use a, a less or equal uh, constraint, meaning that there might be constraints there that might allow, cert uh, might uh, impose a, a, a condition that doesn't allow a, a particular resource to to be assigned to the job. So in this case, we don't force uh, the, the, the linear programming model formulation to assign all the resources. There might be resources that um, uh, cannot be assigned for any reason, or you might have more resources than jobs. So you, you, you shouldn't impose this as an equality. This should be a less or equal inequality. And again, any, any, any constraints of this type, you can see it in, in terms of the rows here. So for <clears throat> the constraint for Joe, it will be X21 if Joe is, Joe is assigned to a tester job, X22 if Joe is assigned to a Java developer job, or X23 if uh, Joe is assigned to the architect job. And since you don't know if Joe, Joe is going to be assigned, this is a less or equal to one constraint. So now, the, the, the objective function. Uh, basically, we can use the same table to figure out how the equation or the linear expression for the, for the objective function should be. So let, 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 let's look again at the jobs. So uh, to satisfy the tester job, Either Carlos is assigned to a tester job, and in this case, X11 will be equal to one. And in, this, in that particular case, the matching score will be 53. Or Joe is assigned to the tester job, and in that case, X21 will be equal to one, and the matching score will be uh, 80. Uh, or Monica uh, can be assigned to the tester job, X3, X31 will be equal to one, and the matching score will be equal to 53. So when we are looking at the tester job, uh, we can write this term uh, in the objective function. It will be 53x11 plus x21 plus 53x31. Uh, 53 and if you look at the other jobs, you can use the same reasoning and you will have this other term. So the objective function will be that maximize the total matching score will be to take the summation of, of essentially all the the, uh, the terms that we have in, in, in this particular cell. So uh, in that way, we, we, we have the, the, the formulation of the uh, linear programming problem. And uh, the next uh, part will be to, to see how we can implement it using uh, the Gurobi Python API. But let's, let's make an abstraction and let's discuss in general uh, what is a, a, a MIP model. 
So in MIP model, we have two types of variables. One variable that we call continuous variable uh, that is non-negative, and this continuous variable can take uh, any fractional value. And another variable that is going to be non-negative and integer. So we have a continuous variable that is uh, non-negative, and we have an integer variable that is non-negative. And in the objective function, we have a linear expression in terms of the x variables, the integer variables, and the continuous variables. And also, we have a linear constraint in terms of the integer variables x and the continuous variables uh, y. And this should be, this could be the inequality is less or equal than a certain uh, value b. So, in general, this is a mixed integer uh, programming uh, problem. But in terms of this uh, MIP uh, formulation, we can define a linear programming problem. So a linear programming problem is when you only have continuous variables, y, that are uh, non-negative. And the objective function will be in terms of, of just the y variables that you have, and you will have constraints just in terms of the y variables. So linear constraints, linear objective and non-negative continuous variable does define a, a linear programming problem. And an integer programming problem will be when you impose that your variables are integer. So you have a linear objective function in terms of your integer variables and you have a linear constraints in terms of your integer variables. So you see, when we talk about MIP, essentially we are talking about three cases. When you have both, you have a combination of, of, of uh, integer and, and, and uh, continuous variables. You have uh, integer programming when you just have continuous variables, and you have integer uh, programming problems when you just have integer variables. So now let's let's go back uh, to the to the problem that we have just formulated as a as a linear programming problem for the assignment problem and and see how we can use the Groovy Python API to to solve this problem. So um, the first line of code will be to essentially call the the Python callable library that we have in in, in Groovy. And then um, for the resources and jobs, we can define two lists, a list of resources that is going to be equal, uh, the name is going to be capital R, and a list of jobs that uh, we are going to call it capital J. And um, basically the main data that, 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 that we have for um, this problem uh, is defined by the matching score. And in, in, in the Gurobi uh, Python API, we, we have developed a, a, a function that we call it a, a multi-dig function. And this multi-dig function allows to initialize one or more dictionary in a single statement. The function takes a dictionary as its argument. They call combinations, uh, um, the keys of, of, of this, uh, of this multi-dig uh, function essentially are the resource and job combination. And the values for these keys can be any of the matching scores that, that we can have. So for example, the keys, are, we are going to call them combinations and the matching score, and we are going to call it MS. So for the combination, the resource uh, job combination, Carlos and Tester, the matching score is going to be 53. So this is a, a nice way or easy way to, to represent uh, the data of, of, of the resource assignment problem. So the next step will be to declare and initialize our model. And for this purpose, we have a, a model constructor, model uh, parenthesis uh, name of, of the model, that will create a model object M. And the name of this new model is going to be wrapped. And this new model initially is empty because uh, to populate this model, we, need, we will need to define decision variables, constraints, and objective function. So let's do that. So as we did it before, uh, one component of the uh, mathematical optimization uh, model are the decision variables. And here we have our table. Uh, this table defines all, uh, all the possible decision variables that we have for each resource 
and job combination. So in Gurobi, we have a method um, that we call the add bus method that is associated to the model object M. And essentially, uh, we are going to uh, store all the decision variables in an object that we are going to call it X. And we are going to have one decision variable for each jo uh, resource and job combination. That's why uh, we, we, we say that the keys of, of, of the decision variables are combination which comes from the multi -dic uh, dictionary that we have. And the second argument will be the name of this uh, decision uh, variable. So when we create a report and all of that, uh, we will see assigned. So now let, 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 let's discuss the job constraints. And for this purpose, uh, we have a, a method that uh, associated with the model object M that is called the add constraint method. And again, we have this table that will help us to understand how, how the job constraints uh, work. So do you remember that we look at the columns? The columns are associated to each of the jobs. So for each job J in a, a list of, of jobs that we call it capital J, we are going to define the, the constraint at the summa, as, as the summation of each of the variables that tell us if we assign a resource to a job. And how we, we, we take that summation, we take the uh, exon method for each job J. And we use the asterisk to make sure that we are considering all the resources that we can assign to the particular job J. So if J is equal to a tester job, this exon method will, will uh, store X11 plus X21 plus X31. And then we have this double equality means that this is an equality constraint and we need to ensure that this job is satisfied uh, as one. That's why we have this, this number one as the right hand side. And the second argument is the name of the, of the job. And these uh, jobs are, is going to be the object that, constrain, that contains all the job constraints. And for the resource constraint, we are going to use the similar idea. But in this particular case, we are going to use this table. And again, remember, we, we, we will be looking at the rows of this table. So again, we are going to use the add constraint method defined over the model object M. All the constraints associated with resources will be uh, stored in, a, in an object that we call resources. And uh, for each uh, resource uh, R, in the list of resources uh, capital L, we are going to define the constraint as the summation of each of the possible jobs that we can assign to the job. And for that purpose, we are going to use the X uh, sum uh, uh, method. But in this particular case, the R is going to be fixed and we are using asterisk to imply that we are taking the summation of all these variable x um, for, for, for each, um, for each um, job that we have here. And remember that uh, it is possible that the resource cannot be assigned, so that's why we have a less or equal uh, inequality. And the right-hand side is, is one, meaning that uh, this resource is available. And the second argument is, 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 is called, uh, is the name of, of, of each of these constraints and we call it resource. And finally, the third important component that we have in the mathematical optimization model are the, is the objective function. And as before, uh, do you remember, uh, uh, we, we have this table and we want to make sure that we take the summation of all the terms uh, that we have in this table and for that purpose, uh, we use um, a, a, a method that is called set uh, objective method defined over the object M. And to make sure that we take the summation of all these terms in this table, we use the X dot cross method. And the second argument will tell Gurobi that this problem is a maximization problem. 
So this is this uh, this is called the GRV dot maximize. This is a flag that tells Gurovi maximize this this problem. And just to summarize, uh, notice that uh, to formulate this, uh, this this problem, we only need nine lines of code. So we can, we have been able to very succinctly summarize and explain uh, to to. Uh, and, and formulate this problem uh, with nine lines of, of, of code. And the next thing to do will be to call the global library and just solve this problem. Uh, so this, the, this solution will work for this small problem three by three, or it can work for thousands of resources or thousands of jobs. And, and just in contrast, there are algorithms special algorithms that you can build uh, for resource assignment. One of them is the Hungarian method. But if you want to implement that algorithm, you will, you will need uh, probably hundreds of lines of code. And whereas here, with uh, nine lines of code, you represent the problem. You don't need to worry about how to solve it. And you just press a button, and you solve the problem uh, using the Gurabi optimizer. So uh, one, one, one function that is very useful when, when you are formulating your problem uh, at the beginning is the right uh, function. So basically, the, the right function um, can write the model that Gurovi has in memory. And in this particular case, that model, we call it a wrap.lp. And then you can debug if Gurovi has properly uh, represent your, your, your model in memory. So you see that the Gurovi says, I am going to maximize an objective function, which is correct. Then you can see each of the terms that has the matching score associated to the proper uh, decision variable. And again, uh, when we assign Carlos to a tester job, this variable will be equal to one, and the matching score will be 53. So you can verify here that the matching scores and the resource job combinations are correctly defined in the objective function, and we are taking the summation of all these terms here. And the constraints will be, uh, for the job constraint, uh, let's take the tester constraint. So either you assign uh, Carlos to the tester job, or you assign Joe to that job, or you assign Monica, and you want to make sure that one of these resources is, is, is equal to one, uh, meaning that it has been assigned to that particular job. And for the resources, uh, you can see that this is the resource constraint for Carlos. And now Carlos is going to be fixed, and Carlos is either uh, allocated to or a Java developer job or an architect job. And for some reason, it is possible that Carlos might not be assigned for this uh, job. So this is why we have a less or equal uh, constraint here. And Carlos is 100% uh, available. So we can verify now that our formulation is correct. So Gurovi in memory has uh, properly uh, generated this problem. So now you don't need to worry about how to solve it. You just use the Optimax function to invoke the optimization uh, model. Um, uh, to, to solve the model object M, and Gurovi will solve it. Gurovi will create a log file that I don't have uh, time to explain in, in, in this webinar. So um, it will solve uh, relatively, very fast in, in point, uh, zero 0.01 seconds. Uh, now let's, let's print the, the, uh, the optimal uh, assignment that Gurovi has been able to identify. So the assign Carlos tester uh, variable equal to one means that Carlos has been assigned to a tester job. Joe has uh, uh, been assigned to the architect job, and Monica has been assigned to the Java developer job. And the total matching score is 193. And if you recall, when we use the complete enumeration, uh, we, very, we can verify that this was the value of the optimal solution, and this was the assignment that leads you to that optimal value. So um, let's now uh, consider an extension of this uh, resource assignment uh, problem to make it more interesting. So let's assume that there is a fixed cost associated uh, to assigning a resource to a job. And let's call uh, this fixed cost C. 
see our uh, gel. Uh, let's assume that there is a limited budget uh, available uh, for the assignment of the sources to jobs, and we, we call this budget B. So in, in the table now, we, we can see that for each resource, for example, for Carlos, if Carlos is assigned to any of the jobs that we have here, the assignment cost will be $1,000. For Joe, uh, being assigned to any of the jobs will be $2,000, and for Monica, uh, assigned to any of these jobs will be $3,000 and our budget will be $5,000. So notice that with this budget, we cannot assign uh, three resources. And we are going to make sure that that doesn't happen uh, in a proper way. So now we, we, we need to add a, a new constraint. And, and, and again, we can, uh, in this table, we have the possibilities that, uh, of, of assignment costs uh, associated with the decision variable. So if Carlos is assigned to a tester job, um, we will need to pay $1,000. If Joe is assigned to an architect uh, job, X23 will be equal to one, and then we will need to pay $2,000. And you can verify that these are the proper combinations of the decision variable and the associate uh, assignment cost. And we need to make sure that the summation of all these possible uh, cost that we can get should be less or equal than uh, $5,000, which is our budget. So let's see how we can uh, formulate this this problem uh, using the Groovy uh, Python a a API. So, so again, we will have two lists. One list, the list R, uh, will contain the resources that uh, we have, and the list uh, J uh, will contain the uh, job uh, positions that we have. And we are going to use the multi-dig function. And this multi-dig function, the keys uh, are the resource and uh, job uh, that we can have. So each combination of resource and tester, we will have it here as keys. And uh, for this dictionary, there are two values for each uh, resource and job combination, the matching score and the cost of assignment. So for Carlos, when assigned as a tester, the matching score will be 53 and the cost of assignment will be $1,000. And uh, the same thing for, for other resource and job combinations. And our budget will be $5,000. So again, to, to uh, formulate the problem, we need to create an empty model that we are going to call it, uh, will be stored in, in, in an object called model, which at this point is, is empty. And I think we are going to call the problem again, RAP, precision, uh, resource assignment problem. And now, um, this is going to be in, in, uh, more interesting because in the past, uh, essentially what we have done when we define the assignment variables, we, we didn't need to tell Gurobi A, hey, make sure that your variable is binary, either take a value of zero or one. In this particular case, because of the budget con constraint, we need to make sure that when we are defining the assignment variables, we need to tell Gurobi that this variable is um, is a binary, and for that purpose, we use this D type equal to GRB dot binary. That way, Gurobi knows oh, the only values that uh, the assignment uh, variables can have needs to be binary. But also, we need to define another variable because because of of the budget, we know that we are not going to be able to satisfy all the jobs. So we define a new variable G, define it over all the jobs, that is, uh, uh, this variable is going to capture a, a potential gap for each job. Uh, so uh, if a job can, cannot be satisfied, then uh, this G variable is going to be equal to one. And that's what we are doing with this um, uh, uh, advanced methods. And then uh, for the job constraints, it's going to be very similar. Uh, we use the add constraints method defined over the object M. Uh, all these constraints are going to be defined uh, with the jobs to define the summation of the, uh, the decision variables associated to the resources that we can allocate to each job J. We use the X sum method and we are using the asterisk to, 
to take the summation over all the resources. But now we are adding the new variable g, j, that tell us uh, it is possible that this job might not be filled. So in this, in that particular case, this uh, variable g, j is going to take the value of one, meaning this job cannot be satisfied. And the constraint is going to be an equality constraint. And again, the name of the job uh, of this particular constraint is going to be jobs. And the resource constraints are identical. So I'm not going to discuss them again. So it's, it's, uh, you don't need to do anything to that constraint. And now to, 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 to define the, the job constraint, we just have one constraint, the budget constraint. So instead of using the, we, we use the add constraint in singular because we are using one, uh, we are defining one uh, constraint only. And for this purpose, what, what we want to do is to take the summation of all the, the terms that we have uh, in, in this table here. And we can use the XPROF uh, method to, 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 to do that. So the XPROF method will take the summation of all these terms uh, in this table, and this should be less or equal than the, uh, than the budget that we are going to call it B. And uh, the other component that we need to define here are, uh, is the objective function. So the objective function is going to be similar, not, not the same. We use the set objective method, uh, define it uh, over the object M. And for the, for the total matching score, again, we use the XPROF method that will take the summation over all the possibilities of, of matching score values that we can get here. But now we want to heavily penalize when we don't satisfy a job. And for that purpose, we are going to take the summation of all the of all the gap variables that we call it G, and uh, we multiply it by a penalty that we are going to uh, call it uh, big M, and this is going to be a negative number. So whenever uh, we have a gap variable being uh, positive, then we pay this big penalty. So we, the optimization will be heavily discouraged to, to not satisfy uh, the jobs. And when it need, uh, when the optimal solution needs to satisfy, uh, not to satisfy one job, it will choose the job that uh, do the less damage in terms of the matching score. So again, notice that to make this significant change in the, in, 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 in the problem, we now have uh, the new formulation defined with 12 constraints, uh, with 12 uh, lines of, of, of code. And the only changes that we had to make was to define a new, uh, well, to redefine the, the assignment variables as binary, define a new decision variable as gaps, then for the job constraint, make sure that we add that new gap variable in the constraint to capture when the job is not satisfied, and then define the new constraint for budget, and then in the objective function, uh, we just add a, or subtract a, a big penalty whenever a gap a variable is, is, is positive. So with this uh, 12 line of code, we have completely redefined a new problem here. So if you have code your Hungarian method with hundreds of lines of code, that method won't work here. So you will need to start from scratch. Whereas with uh, the Gurobi solver, you just declare your problem in, in satisfying the new conditions that you have, you press a button, and then you solve the, the problem. This saves a lot of time during development when business conditions are constantly changing. So if you constantly change, you need to change your algorithm, that's really a pain. Whereas when you use a mathematical optimization, you just make sure that your new uh, model formulation captures your new situation and it's relatively easy to do that, as, as I have shown it to you. So we will invoke the optimization uh, method in Gurobi, and we use the optimize function. We will get a log that I don't have time to describe here. And let's display uh, the, the assignment uh, variables and the solution that we will get for this new model. So the, the assignment variable tell us uh, which resource is being assigned to which job. So Joe is assigned to a tester job. 
Monica is assigned to the Java, Java developer job, and we have a gap, the architect gap. And Joe is idle. Uh, Joe has not been assigned. Remember, uh, when you make this assignment of, uh, of Joe to tester and Monica to developer, the matching score of Joe for architect was 13, so that's really bad. So when you you you, you want to, so uh, really the optimizer choose the best combination of matching scores uh, to optimize given these constraints. And the total matching score is 153. The objective function value now is 52 because this takes the summation of the matching scores minus the big penalty that we have and the and the gap variable. So really the, the, the value that you need to be looking at is this 153, which is the new optimal matching score. So let's let's summarize uh, our our discussion today. And essentially what we have covered is the following. We have discussed what mathematical optimization is and why it is important. We examine uh, the resource assignment problem and demonstrated that uh, simple heuristics can lead to poor uh, assignments. Also, we illustrate that enumerating all possible assignments is practically impossible, so, uh, since the number of assignments is uh, astronomical. So uh, what we have done is to formulate the resource assignment problem as a linear programming problem and discuss that uh, how to implement this uh, linear uh, programming uh, problem formulation of the resource assignment problem using the Gurovi API. And also we make a modification to, to the problem uh, by adding a budget constraint. And when we add that constraint, we need to make sure that now we need to declare integer uh, that the variables are, are, are integer. So really when we add a budget constraint, we need to use a, a, a MIP formulation. And basically that's, that's it. Uh, that's all that I, I, I have uh, for you. And I strongly recommend that, that you visit our uh, Gurobi website. And we have a special se section for data scientists that uh, we have a lot of resources, videos, tutorials, uh, examples and all of that. So I strongly recommend that you go there. And also if you need a license, you can get an evaluation license if you uh, work in, in, in a business. But if you are in academia, you can, uh, as, a, uh, as a resource, you can, you, as a, a, a student or a professor, you can get a, a license for free. So I'm done. Um, Sean, uh, uh, back to you. Pano, thanks for that excellent presentation. We'll get started with today's Q&A session, and I want to thank the audience for their participation. We have a great many questions that have come in during the presentation, and we'll do our best to get through all of them in the remaining time. During this Q&A session, I'll leave up this screen with contact information for Pano. If you'd like to contact him for a copy of the slide deck following today's pr uh, presentation. So let's get started. So Pano, the first question is, my model has some quadratic nonlinear terms. Can Gurobi manage these? Yes, this is a good question. And, and yes, uh, we, can, we can do that. Uh, Gurobi can handle MIP models with uh, quadratic constraints and quadratic objective function. Wonderful. Thanks for clarifying. Next question is, how does Gurobi compare to the open source solvers available? Um, uh, Gurobi solver in general is much more faster than uh, open source uh, solvers. As a matter of fact, uh, in benchmarks and internal uh, problems that we have, uh, basically Gurobi has the best performance in, in, in the market. But in, in particular, uh, for open uh, so, source solvers, Gurobi is significantly faster than these open source solvers. And in, for many real world applications, Gurobi can be one or two orders of magnitude faster. Great. Does Gurobi have any examples of models that I can use as a starting point? Yes. 
uh, that's what uh, I am working on. Uh, we are we are creating a, a library of modeling examples in in Jupyter Notebook and tutorials and uh, application of uh, examples of of mathematical optimizations in in different industry. So and we are building this 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 library. So just visit our website and 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 you can find uh, uh, this uh, library of modeling examples and it will be growing we will be adding constantly new examples uh, for for people to learn more about how to use mathematical optimization fantastic are there any additional tutorial materials available yes we have two video tutorials that really are at the uh, introductory level, one for mixed integer uh, programming and another one for linear programming. Um, the one for lin linear programming is a little bit more advanced. It starts from uh, scratch, but it also explains a little bit about algorithms and, and um, has a little bit m more of math, but uh, that helps people to, in particular, understand the logs, the log files that I couldn't explain. So yeah, I strongly recommend that uh, you take a look to these two uh, video tutorials that we have. Okay, great. And I think you mentioned that both of those video tutorials are on your website, correct? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, perfect, thank you. What are the typical modeling languages used in math programming and what languages can I code an optimization model in? Good question. There are um, the most popular modeling examples are AMPOL and GAMS. So when when the, if you Google this thing and you use uh, mathematical optimization modeling uh, languages, you you will get these two AMPOL and, and GAMS. And these these modeling examples are especially designed to build uh, mathematical optimization models. Nevertheless, <laughs> after saying that, and these are very popular and all of that, I strongly recommend that you use uh, our Groovy Python API. Overall, if you are a data scientist, you know uh, Python very well. And um, uh, uh, our Groovy Python API is really strong. Uh, it has many features that cannot be captured properly in, in, in these uh, uh, general modeling examples. So I, that will be my recommendation about a, a language that you can use to build these models. Nevertheless, you, 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 you might be an expert in, in C++, Java, .NET, C. We have APIs, so you can build your model uh, using these uh, languages, uh, programming languages. Wonderful. Does Gurobi support MATLAB? Yes, it supports uh, MATLAB and also uh, supports R. Okay, great. I think we have time for one more question. Uh, can logical constraints such as if then or exclusive or be modeled with an integer programming mo problem? Yeah, I like this question. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> this is uh, um, uh, this capability uh, of, of having if then or exclusive or uh, constraints allows uh, a modeler to build models that combines arithmetic with uh, predic uh, predicative logic. So you can build expert systems that captures all the logic and inference that you have in an expert system, but also captures arithmetic. You can have constraints as capacity constraints, satisfy demand constraints, and all of that. So you can build very sophisticated uh, models by combining these two. Excellent question. Thank you. Well, Pano, thank you, too. Great answers to some very good questions. And for those of you that asked questions that weren't answered today, we will be sending all unanswered questions to Pano and the Gurobi team so that they can follow up with you after today's webinar. I have just a few quick announcements. Please mark your calendars for March 12, 2020, and our next DSC webinar, Developing and Testing Shiny Apps. Also, today's taping will be available for on-demand viewing later today and can be found on the homepage of Data Science Central in the webinar tab located at the top of the page. 
and past webinars are available on demand at datasciencecentral.com. If you haven't had the opportunity to view them, I encourage you to take a look. They provide very useful insight into a wide variety of topics of interest to our data science community. This brings today's webinar to a close. I'd like to thank our audience for their attendance and thoughtful questions, and a special thanks again to Gurobi for their sponsorship, as well as to our speaker today, Dr. Pano Santos, for his insight into today's topic. My name is Sean Welch, and I'm very pleased to have been your host for today's event. I look forward to seeing you all again on March 12, 2020. Have a great day.